What is going on guys? Welcome back to the channel. Critical Overload here. So we're going to talk about Scream 7 in this video here today. Now, this is mostly going to be a theory video, but I wanted to uh, address something that I know has been making the rounds online for the past couple of days related to the fact that it seems Scream 7 has reportedly or is rumored to have been greenlit and is going to start shooting later this year. Now, this is coming to us from Screen Geek. Nobody from Paramount has made a mention of this. Nobody from Spyglass has made a mention of this. Nobody from Radio Silence has made a mention of this. Nobody from Project X, Project X Entertainment has made a mention of this. Nobody associated with any of the past two Scream movies that we have now received has mentioned anything about this. But I wouldn't be too shocked to find out that this is true, given that Scream 5 had Scream 6 written and ready to go prior to its release in 2022 and there was a Blackmore unit or Blackmore working title production office already established in Canada prior to the release of Scream 5 and in between the events of filming 5 and now with the release of 6 that's plenty of time to not only write Scream 6 map out an outline for 7 and we now have heard that it's rumored from viewer now that they are deep in the writing process of completing Scream 7. So I wouldn't be too shocked to learn that they have completed the script for Scream 7 within the next month or so. And then you get a report telling us that Scream 7 will indeed film later this year. It's just not something that's officially been announced by any headlines like Variety, Bloody Disgusting, or any of the major sites that people usually go to uh, with more credibility, people would like to say. But I want to share my thoughts on where I could see Scream 7 going in terms of a storyline and you guys can let me know if you think it's really going to shoot later this year down in the comment section below but this is an idea i've considered for scream 7 it's more of an in-depth look of what i've been saying should happen for a while minor spoilers ahead of course for scream 6 based on what i'm saying about 7 uh this is mostly about 7 but it's going to be based on again things that have happened in scream 6 and things that have happened in the past scream movies as well so with Scream 7, again, spoiler warning, if you don't want any spoilers and haven't seen Scream 6, shouldn't be watching. I mean, most of it might be vague. But so with Scream 7, I firmly believe we need to address the exploitation head on with a motive that is acknowledging the end of the series for now by offering up a killer who wants to put an end to every survivor that could possibly spark a new ghost face spree and cause pain to several people around them like these sprees always seem to do. They always seem to do more harm to everyone around them than actually to the real targets of the spree or at least that's how it appears to our killers who see themselves as the heroes acting for the greater good of society. These people hate Hollywood, they hate the Stab franchise, they hate true crime series, and they especially hate people like Gail Weathers for their exploitive ways. In Scream 7, what I could see happening is a true crime series going on based on the, on the life of every Woodsboro murderer, or murderer, I should say, or major copycat that has been on the air at this point in this movie for at least two years now season one covered billy and his mother season two covered roman bridger and jill roberts season three covered amber and richie and now season four is covering the recent killers in scream six that's the gist of what i'm getting at of course that'll be a nice parallel to what we saw in scream three now season four is currently in production in modesto i'll say and gail weathers is executive producing the series she has been from the very beginning gail also has a new boyfriend named franklin i'll just say it's three years after the events of six so tara and her friends are out of college and the sisters still have a broken relationship with their mother christina Sam is actually, we learn now, working with Leslie Mocker, who owns a small business related to Christless Counseling. So there's another Screen 3 parallel. The opening kill, I would say, can be the showrunner of this true crime series based on the real Woodsboro events. And Sydney Prescott can be shown out to dinner with them during the opening. So this is how we loop in Sydney Prescott. She's not divorced or anything. That's not what I'm saying. But the showrunner wants Sydney to consider working on a documentary about the Woodsboro events with them and invited her to dinner in Modesto to discuss it. Now, this would act as a reason Sydney has to stay behind since she would be the last person close to the showrunner prior to their death and she would be a person of interest and brought in for questioning, of course. Kincaid can join her just because his wife's there, take time off from work to come join his wife there. Other crew members working on the show start dying. We also meet Christina Carpenter finally, who was asked to participate in this documentary to address her relationship with Billy Loomis, which is something she doesn't mind doing anymore since her daughter ruined the secret she was trying to have. Christina's death would be the reason Sam and Tara ultimately get involved. So in my Scream 7, ideally, it is shifting the focus to Gail and Sydney for at least the first act. And then our core four will return after that first and a little bit of the second act. By the end, you get four people unmasked as Ghostface. You have Gail's boyfriend, Franklin, who is actually Tara's dad, who orchestrated everything. 
in the events of Scream 6, not or in the events of Scream 7, I meant to say. He had nothing to do with the events of 5 and 6. It's not going to be like a Roman Bridger thing, but he is responsible for 6. His partner, Leslie Mocker, Danny, Sam's returning boyfriend from Scream 6, and another crew member involved with this show. The primary motive from Leslie Mocker and Tara's dad is stopping the exploitation and curing society of people like our our main survivors who do nothing but experience tragedies that hurt others while they continue to live and profit off the experience while the others involved who were hurt as well or you could argue were hurt more hurt just as much as they were if not more they they just fade into nothing the media doesn't talk about these people it doesn't talk about how these tragedies have affected the innocent bystanders in all of this leslie can give a whole speech about how no one ever wonders how billy's actions ruin the innocent mockers that are not stew because they did nothing Meanwhile, two people close to Billy, like Sam and Sydney, continue to be acknowledged as the innocent victims. But the truth is, Leslie and her parents were innocent as well. But no one seems to care. They are ridiculed in, in public. Uh, or at least that's what it was like for them after the events of Scream. And that's what Leslie's life has kind of been like. She's been ridiculed. She's maybe struggled to get jobs. So much stuff that she's kind of went through all because her brother did this and she blames that on Billy Loomis and is now taking that aggression out on the girl, the past girlfriend of Billy Loomis and his past or not his past, but his daughter. And then ultimately from this, she's also mad about the death of her son, Vince. So Gail especially is not someone they like because Gail is fine with this stuff continuing. They don't like the movies or the TV shows. They don't like these tragedies being exploited, but they especially hate Gail because she really doesn't care as long as she's making a profit from it all. Ultimately, Tara's dad, you will find out, maneuvered his way into Gail's life, had already previously met Leslie, and the two blackmailed one of the crew members to assist while also convincing Danny to participate by telling him they'd pay him money. So yes, the partners are useless. I don't have a good idea in my head for the partners just yet, but still, they're here as usual. Tara's dad is absolutely upset about Sam breaking up their family, and he was mad at Christina for lying to him for years. So that is how I could see Scream 7 playing out. You guys can let me know what you think about this down the comment section below what do you think about the possibility of having this be more of a sydney and gail type of centric movie up front before it brings in the core four that we've gone grown to know and love from the events of scream five and six let me know what you guys think about this down in the comment section below if you haven't already of course make sure you subscribe turn on post notifications so you never miss a video in the description i'll have links to my social media accounts i am on facebook twitter and instagram you can message me there of course to let me know if there are any movies news or reviews you'd like me to cover in the future and with all that in mind guys i will see you in the next video